Hello, party people, it is Will Pemble. First things first, JP, happy birthday. I met JP and his sister Gianna and his mom Mariana and his dad John Paul the other day and they are building a roller coaster. So way to go, you guys. I can't wait to see how it comes along. Maybe I can come by and help a little bit. I would love to do that. Way to go. I know you're going to be building a PVC coaster. So what I wanted to do today for everybody, but especially you JP because it's your birthday, is I wanted to build a 10 foot long straight and level piece of track. We're going to build the rails, the ties, the supports, just a 10 foot long piece of track and we're going to put it nowhere. Probably, uh, you know, maybe I'll just like bring it to you JP and you can put it somewhere on your coaster. So I got some of the bits and pieces cut up and you can look about how we did that in former videos and now we're going to get started building it. started on this we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need our awesome ties where we've got our cupped or coved uh, sides on the edge and so these are 15 inches long. I've got two 10 foot long pieces of one and a half inch inside diameter schedule 80 PVC. First I'm going to clamp this thing together. We're going to get it all positioned right and then we're going to drill some holes and set some screws. I'm not having fun doing it without you, I'll tell you that much. It's much more awesome with you. What are you doing? I'm going to get mine. Okay, great. Yeah. See you later. Right, Steve? For a straight and level piece of track, what I'm doing is I'm putting the ties every two feet. So every two feet on center, we're going to have a tie, and I just marked them off, starting one foot in so that I can manage my connections. Starting one foot in, I'm just going to put them every two feet or so, and that's how that's going to work. Okay, that looks pretty good. I've got my whole length of track clamped together. It's wonderful to build these things in the garage under perfect circumstances. Once you get out into the yard, things change a little bit, but it's always best to know how to do it perfect, and then it makes it easier to adapt to, well, let's just call it the real world. Now we drill some holes and set some screws. Ten feet of track, five ties, four screws per tie, five times four, twenty screws we're gonna need. This part gets noisy, remember, hearing damage is cumulative and permanent. Protect your hearing! Protect your hearing! That looks pretty good. So again, we've got, we put our screws in right at this 45 degree mark on the rail so that our, our top wheels, our road wheels, will go right over and they won't hit the screws. And our upstop wheels, our side wheels, will also not hit the screws. And that way you don't get the thudunk, thudunk, thudunk sort of a sound. I gotta put the camera down for a minute to take the clamps away. Always put away your stuff afterwards. Then you can find it next time. And here we have it. Here is a, like a perfect piece, perfectly straight, perfectly level, PVC and lumber roller coaster track. Uh, I'm 
seem to have any screws poking out of the bottom of the thing, which is nice. It's all really, really tightly put together. We've got that awesome Paul Gregg Cove in the side there. So it really, really looks good. Um, there's a couple of things missing. Supports, a cart, a yard to put it in. There's a lot of things. Right now what we're going to do is build the supports for that. There are a couple other videos that talk more specifically about how to build the ties, how to connect the ties to the rails, how to connect the rails to one another. All of those are in videos that came before this one. This video in particular is about how to build supports so that we can get the track up off the ground, which obviously is the next step in building a roller coaster. Let me draw a picture of what I'm going to do right now. If you look at the cross, if you look at the cross section of track that we just built, it looks something like that. Oh, by the way, not to scale. All right, this is just a drawing here. Um, what I want to do is that's our, that's our two by four, right? There's our two by four. Right? I'll try to do a little perspective there. Okay, there's our track going down that way. There's track going down that way. Here's our screws going in here. Here's our screws going in there. Okay, so there's our track, uh, a cross section of our track. What we want to do is we want to, assuming a perfectly level piece of ground, we want to take a four foot two by four and place it on the ground. And what we can do is we can anchor that four foot piece of two by four into the ground using, I used five eighths rebar for my roller coasters. And so we can anchor that piece into the ground, not at the beginning, but we'll end up anchoring that piece into the ground. And then what we want to do is we want to have a piece of two by four lumber that goes up to the center of our tie and is cut at an angle so that it matches up with whatever we want the level of our track to be. And then we want another piece of two by four to sort of intersect here, starting at this point and going up, intersecting with the bottom of our rail and then coming back down to our track. And so we want to build a kind of a triangle and then we take lag bolts and we put two lag bolts through the top of the rail and that's how we put the whole thing together. Gonna start out with the base. Depending on where in the yard, if it's on a hill or if it's level or whatever, you're gonna have different size, different lengths of bases cut at different angles and all that stuff. But again, we're talking dead level here. The goal is to take this piece of track and just put it right up there above the bench, right? That's all I'm gonna get to. So I'm gonna use, as my standard, I use a base that's four feet long. It also makes it really easy because I can just take an eight foot two by four and cut it in half, which I'm gonna do right now. JP, when you're using that new chop saw, you just got to be very careful with it. Make sure you know where all ten fingers are before you start so that you end up with ten fingers when you're done. I know your dad is going to supervise the heck out of that. Basically what we're looking at is we're looking at, this is going to be the tie that goes across and then my track is going to go this way and then down here is going to be the base. So what I want to do next is I want to figure out how far and at what angle to cut my 2x4. I like for the outside of my brace to be about 6 inches from the end of the board here. So I measure a line that's 6 inches from either side and I mark those off thusly. Now, if I imagine my three foot high support, this is going to be my angle. Once I get this first board cut and I know this is going to fit and I know that the angle and elevation for the track is going to be good here, what I do is I take two of my construction screws, three and a half inch construction screws, and I screw up from the bottom of this plate so that that stays where it ought to be.
That makes the rest of it really, really easy to just measure by placing the board up against scoring a line. You don't have to do the math every single time. And then the thing fits together like this, right? Nice and strong. Construction screws in the bottom. And as it turns out, you don't have to screw the top pieces of this triangle together because when we put the tie of the track on top and bolt through it, that's what's gonna hold it together. I've tried on occasion to go through the side of this 2x4 to keep things steady that way, but more often than not, I split the wood or at least I weaken it. So the screws that go down through here are going to hold the whole thing together. The screws coming up from the bottom of this base plate help to hold the thing together and then also compression force, just everything pushing down on it, that also helps to keep it strong. And remember we spoke earlier about putting uh, rebar in through the base plate to hold it to the ground. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole through the base plate with just a spade bit so that it's ready to accept a piece of rebar. And that way when I get it out in the lawn, wherever I want it, I can put some rebar through it and it'll stay right put. All right, so that's one of our three foot supports. I'm gonna build another one and then we're gonna attach it to the track and that'll be it. Okay, now I've got my two supports. Now I've got my one piece of track. Let's see if we can fit those things together and get it to start looking like a bit of a roller coaster, yeah? what it should look like. So there's one more piece that I like to do, which I call a stringer. And I take a two by four, and if it's a longer piece of track or something, maybe even a two by six, and I run it underneath in between each of the supports. But basically that's how you do it. You make a couple of triangles, you make some track, you put it together, you use lots and lots of screws, you cut your angles really carefully, you do everything one step at a time, and you make sure it's really, really strong. One of the fun things about constructing with wood is that you can always add more wood. You try to build it really smart in the first place, which I think I've done here, and then we can build ourselves a really fun, really safe roller coaster. If you have better ideas, different ideas, which I'm sure you do, because if we all put our heads together, we're always smarter than any one of us. If you've got ideas about how we can do this better, what we can do to modify it, please put it in the comments below. Share in the conversation. Let us know your best thinking. Let's do better than this. But this is the very beginning thing. Thank you for helping me bring physics, family, and fun to kids everywhere. Happy birthday, JP. I will see you soon.